Hey guys, this is going to be the first video for the Marquee from Insignia. This was a collaboration project from myself, Cisco from Avid Vapor, and John Boy, USMC. There's the Addy. Twenty-two millimeter Addy. This is the finish. Oh, let me see if I could focus. This is the finish you should expect to get. When you receive the Addy. Every single Addy is hand finished. leave it with a brushed finish. This is the drip tip that will come when it's delivered. You can see we have the marquee logo. Very, very subtle. We don't like uh, gaudy stuff. That's the bore on the drip tip. And I'll dig into the features as you know in a little bit. That's the bottom of the of uh, the Addy. All all of them are serialized. Copper center pin. Now when you receive it, let me zoom out. When you receive it, you're going to get the Addy is going to be assembled just like this. You're going to receive one, two, three, four building tools. And uh, I'll get into these also. Uh, in addition, you're going to get some drip tops. Those are the two additional drip tops. I guess I'll start off with the uh, drip tops. The way the Addy is designed, it this lid can be just popped right off so you can drip right onto the deck. Very simple, pops in, pops out. It's on there tight enough where it's not going to wiggle off. And even if you push it, it will not pop out. So it's in there, and it's not snug enough that it's going to be difficult to pop in and out. But it's, I, th I think the tension is just right. Uh, what I find myself doing when I'm putting it back, I kind of give it a little twist. It barely twist just to get it in place, but it, it goes in and out no problem. So the ins uh, the drip top is held in with an O-ring and a peak insulator, and the uh, this this drip top is actually isolated from the cap. So when you install this, no part of this stainless drip tip or drip cap is actually touching any stainless on the uh, the top cap. So that's going to kind of help you with the with the heat transfer. Uh, now this insulator, this uh, peak insulator, is threaded onto this. So what we've added here is two other drip tops. So if you don't like using this stainless drip top, you can simply unscrew. Well, let me see. I put it in here and I unscrew it. There we go. You can unscrew that, and then you can interchange with other the other two drip tops. Now this drip top has a four millimeter raised section on it. Alright? And that's it. Right there. We get a drip tip. Now obviously this is gonna be able to take any five ten drip tip. This is actually one of uh, Avid's wide board ones. So that is what you'll use if you want to use the four millimeter raised. Then in addition, we have a flat one. Now this one also same thing. You would take your peak insulator off off that and thread it right onto this. A little tricky finding the threads, I guess, huh? There we go. 
guess that might have been easier if I had a trip tip in it. And that's going to be another option that you can have. I actually prefer it with the uh, stainless drip tip. Now, one other thing, this this is actually 10 millimeter tall drip tip. This is the lar the highest one. And if you desire, you can put a drip tip in that as well. So there's a lot of options with the drip top. Now, I'll show you underneath the deck. Actually, maybe we'll start with the bottom. They've all been serialized. Let me get you another close-up. All been serialized. A is going to be represent the first run, and these go. The first run is going to be 1,000 pieces. And this is mine is number 13. It's got a uh, copper center pin, but all the interior of the atomizer is all stainless steel, all 304. Now, the uh, maybe we should start with the building tools. You're going to get f four building tools, two of one size, two of another size. Now, this is the smaller size. This section right here is two millimeters, so you can wrap a two millimeter coil on this. This section is two and a half millimeters, and you're going to get two of these so you can wrap dual coils. The second set steps up. This is a, this was a two, and, I'm sorry, this is a two and a half, this is a three. So you get two and a half millimeter coil, three millimeter coil. Now you step up to the larger size, this is three and a half millimeters, and then this section is four millimeters. And again, you'll get two of these as well. So now here's all the parts. You're going to get the, uh, two, the drip tops and the, uh, and the deck, obviously, the top cap. So you've got a lot of stuff coming in this kit. Now the deck. If you look closely, let's see if we can focus here. Okay, if you see in the bottom of the well, by the way, that well is six millimeters deep, so this thing can hold some some juice. You'll see there's two holes here and here. What those are for is you can take your building rod and you can actually, if you see, th this is also stepped. So that part will go right into your, into those holes. And what this is going to do is going to help you build your coils. And at the same time, if you use these, your coil will be center of the air hole every single time. So there's no more adjusting your top cap to, you know, your, your air hole on your atomizer to align with your, uh, with your coil. Every single time, it's dead on. The only thing you have to concern yourself with is the air adjustment, which I'll get to next. So now, this is, this is three and a half millimeter coil you'd be using. And then if you wanted to build a four millimeter diameter coil, you would simply pop that out and then pop that in. Flip it over. Use the four millimeter side and that'll give you a four millimeter. Now the other thing you can do with is, this is your two and a half millimeter. That snaps in there also. And if you want to go to two and a half, I'm sorry, three millimeter, you just flip them over for a three millimeter coil. Now if I use, it, let me flip it into the two and a half millimeter side because you could get a good, you can see that the uh, these holes line up with the air holes perfectly. See if you can get if you can see the edges of the air holes. Now the air holes in the in the Addy deck are two and a half millimeters. So if you wanted to build a chimney coil, you could build a chimney coil. You can build it two millimeter. 
you could slide it in, build a two and a half millimeter. I would not suggest trying to build a uh, a three and a half or a four millimeter. I would. I don't, I'm not. I haven't tried it. it could, I mean, you might be able to do it, but it's it's kind of tight. But you can definitely do a two and a half millimeter and a three millimeter chimney coil on this thing without a problem. You could actually even insert it from this side to do a two and a half millimeter, set up your coil, and then slide it right out. Now the air holes in the deck are two and a half millimeters. The air holes on the cap, I believe, are they came out to like two point six. Yeah, see, it's oh, here. I gotta check the middle one. I'm sorry. The inner holes, the uh, the holes on the top cap are 2.4 millimeter. They are slightly smaller than the holes on the uh, the body itself, and that's so you don't have any issues with alignment. All right. Now, if you look at the if you look at the cap, you can see. Let's get it to where the air holes are. That would be dual coil. And if you look, the holes line up perfectly. And if you wanted to restrict your air hole airflow, you would simply turn it to cut off some of the air. Now if you want to go to single coil, that center hole is going to be for your single coil. You would just turn that to one side, that'll give you a single coil, or you can turn it to the other half. And that'll give you a single coil also. And then if you go to there, that's dual coil. Now, the cap, if you listen, it'll snap, really snap on nice. And uh, the tension for pulling this thing off, it's pretty good. Uh, I'll show you later. I can put it actually on a 26650 device and then shake it holding the cap, and it will not come off. And But it's tight enough... To, that it won't come off, but it's also just a right, the right spot that you can rotate your airflow with a little bit of resistance. Not so loose that it's going to be sloppy, but loose enough that you're not going to have to really horse it. So I think we hit a sweet spot there, and it's working really good. And part of it is the reason is that inside this top cap, I don't know if you can see it or not, there is a little groove there. And that groove actually captures this o-ring this top o-ring so when you snap this on that o-ring pops into that groove and it kind of retains the top cap but also gives you enough where you can just slowly you know nice and easy change your airflow adjustment now let's get to the let's get to the deck back to the deck anyway you got uh two ground screws, one positive. Now the positive post is a pretty unique design that uh, this was actually Cisco's brainchild and what it looks like is a crown. And you can see, let me show you up close. Is that going to focus? can see it's got tabs on it and I'll show you how uh, how they are to build on you can see the marquee logo is engraved in the top at CNC engraving so you're not gonna have to worry about that stuff uh, coming off on you and uh, the positive screw also, it looks like it has a washer on it, but that's actually a machine that way. That's built in. That's not a separate piece. Uh, every single part on this atomizer, with the exception of these ground screws and the O-rings, 
has been custom made. So there are only two off the shelf parts on this Addy. All the peak insulators, all special made, and the positive screw, the hardware, everything. Now, let's see, what else am I forgetting? I think that's about it. Let me show you a little build. I'll do a quick build on this so you guys can get an idea. Because one of the things we wanted in the design was ease of build. We wanted to make it as easy as possible, especially for dual coils. And I think I'll be able to demonstrate that fairly easy. A matter of fact, I'm going to demonstrate it without even using, I'm going to leave that positive post, that positive screw, all the way up until I'm, until I'm finished. So you'll get the idea. Anyway, so what I got here is I have two uh, coils that I pre-wrapped. These are, uh, I did these on a four millimeter rod and these are, uh, this is 24 gauge Cantor. Now, you got to remember if you're going to be doing coils, you want to wrap them opposite. So one is going to go clockwise, and then the other one is going to go counterclockwise. They can't be the same. they got to be opposing each other. So let's see. We'll put the 4 millimeter building tool on here. All right. I'm going to open this up a little bit. You're probably going to hear my dog bark, too. We're going to put the first... Actually, this is the wrong side. Open that up a little. Okay, here we go. So now, this tool is set in there. And what I do is I take my... Let me see if I can zoom in a little bit. See if this is better. Yeah, that's better. I'm going to take my negative lead, and I'm going to wrap it on the outside of the of the uh, ground screw. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to tighten that up. All right. So now I'm just going to wiggle this off. Make sure this is tight. Okay. Now, the way to capture as a matter of fact, you know what? I'm going to take this positive screw out so you guys can really see exactly what I'm doing. I'm actually going to pull it with a pair of pliers because I want it tight. So you take your your positive wire. Let's see if I can get this on camera correctly. And what you do is pull it behind the one tab and then this way. Alright? And then all you do is pull your wire that way. Now that's that dual that's that is secure. That's not going to go anywhere right now. We're going to leave that alone. Now we're going to get to the other coil. You take the four and a half, uh, four millimeter rod again. We're going to insert that into the deck. You want to make sure that this wire is on the other side like that. Okay, now we're going to take our negative and we're going to tuck that underneath. And then I'm going to tighten this. And the reason I like to use the, uh, put the negative on the outside is for when you're installing your cotton later. Alright, wiggle that off. Now my ground screw is connected if you see it on the outside. Now I'm going to take my other side. I'm going to put it behind that tab. I hope I can get this. And I'm going to pull my wire this way now. So now what I have here is two dual coils that are installed. I don't even have the positive screw in yet. And they're not going anywhere. I could actually, if I wanted to, I could pull out 
the uh, coiling rod and it'll stay in place. But we're going to put that back until we're done. All right. So now we have both our wires trapped. Now what I do is I take the positive the positive screw. Now the other thing you don't need to do with this because the way the wires are trapped there is no reason to horse down this uh, positive screw because if you see let's see if you can see it let me try to focus this there we go you can see that once the y the, the screw passes those tabs now that wire is not coming out no way no how all right and all I do is tighten it until it's just a little snug there is no reason to horse it down and then what I do is I'm gonna take my wire same thing just try to snap it off and then what I'll do is I'll just check this again just to make sure it didn't move okay so now I have two coils that are now I'm really not in the mood to do a micro coil right now so I'm just gonna spread these out so what I'm gonna do is put my fingers over the top of these things and I'm just going to spread these coils just a little bit to give a little bit of a gap there. Alright, so now what we have is two pretty perfect coils. Let me see if I can get a little better focus here. If I could shut my dog up, that'd be great. There we go. And you, you see how nice these coils are. Now, this atomizer is going to make people that are not that good great because it's so easy to build. And now your coils are directly in front of those air holes. I mean, I don't know if you could see it or not, but they are perfect dead center. Can't get no better than that. All right, let's get back out a little bit. <coughs> We're going to test fire and see what the resistance is. I don't think I'm shooting for about 0.3 ohms or around there. Point 0.4 ohms. All right, I'm a little off. Probably should have went with one less wrap. Let's give it a little fire. I don't like to heat up the coils too fast. There we go. There you have nice dual coil setup. All right, so we got the coils licked. I'm going to show you how to build, how, we, how I wick it. Another very simple procedure. Uh, let's get a little, little thing here. This is not going to be, this is not going to work. Let's use this. All right, wicking this thing is <laughs> simple as pie. All I do, let me zoom in. The way I built, the way I wick it, is I will take a strip of, I'm using Japanese cotton for this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a couple of little strips, real thin. Real thin strips. All right. 
And what I do is I take a toothpick and I just push that in. Fluff it up a little bit. Take a toothpick again. And just push that down. I want to get it, make sure it's hitting the bottom of the deck. And just fluff it up a little bit. And then I'll take another little piece of cotton. And I'll just, I mean, this, this, you don't need that much cotton. And then what I'll do is I will just tuck it in between the two coils. And that's it. The one thing you want to make sure is that you're not, make sure your air holes are not blocked. All right. And then I just trim the top even with the, uh, with the positive screw. And that's it. That is, let's try this again. That's wicked. So, I hope I'm not forgetting anything. Let's put it on an Addy, uh, on a mod. Fire it up. And it holds a fair amount of juice. So I think uh, the juice capacity is going to be acceptable to most everybody. And what I'll do is I'll just kind of clean this up just a little bit. And that's it. That's done. Now, put your top cap on, rotate it to dual airflow. Now I have both air holes exposed. And if you look in the top, you can see your cotton. And what I do pretty much is I just douse both of those wicks like that. Take my top cap. Now, one of the things I do, and I'm not going to say this thing is leak-proof. It's not leak-proof. I would, would I say it's leak-resistant? Kind of. Um, I vape it with the, hole, with the holes away from me. So that means that when I tip it towards me, the air holes are up in the air. And what's happening is the juice is traveling down to the this side of the atomizer where the wicks are so that's the way I vape it I, I don't and it doesn't leak and then if I put it in my pocket all I do is give it a quarter turn and it, and it kind of blocks up the the holes this friggin computer does not like there it goes focus so I can kind of seal it up so it kind of it's it's kind of really pocket friendly because you're not going to get any juice leaking out I mean it's obviously going to come out of the drip tip if you turn it upside down but and then if you, when you're ready to vape it, just turn it back. Opens wide up. So.
and she works good. Now, I've also tested this using a mesh build. So if you into vertical coils with uh, mesh, it works great also. Um, I can't think of anything else that I could be missing. It's a, I think, a beautiful Addy. Uh, the three of us worked extremely hard on it. And uh, it will be sold online exclusively at Avid Vapor uh, in the U.S. We don't have any uh, overseas distributors yet. Uh, and they will be available in some brick and mortars. Uh, price is going to be $145, obviously, plus shipping. And um, I think that's it. I can't think of anything else. Any questions, hit me up. I hope you guys like it.